Let's do one more example. Let's give a name to this last example. Four six tri nitro toluene. Very good. Here we have to use a common name, toluene, and that's the basis of the numbering system. Two four six tri nitro toluene. Very good. Now, trinitrotoluene is a common explosive. TNT, there you go. Trinitrotoluene. So this wasn't in the lecture notes, but I thought it was interesting cool. to see where this name comes from. Trinitro. So uh, after doing all of that work, we can see where this name for this uh, common explosive uh, comes from. So the common explosive uh, TNT, that really stands for 246-trinitrotoluene. All right, well, uh, you mentioned that this instructor's uh, been putting a fair amount of nomenclature on there, and there was certainly a lot in the lecture notes, so hopefully, uh, hopefully some of that will pay off on the exam that's coming up. But obviously, the next step is to make flashcards for the common names and for the naming that we learned, and uh, try to do more homework problems on your own. All right. Now, um, the next topic your instructor talked about was, um, well, what's the name for this molecule? Uh, phenol. Yeah, so the next topic is phenol. So it turns out that phenol is a very important benzene derivative. So All let's right. look at some of the ideas that were discussed there. Bless you. Thanks. Let's give a name to this. Now, um, what do you know? What do you? How do you know what takes priority here? Ah, good point. That's a good point. Uh, maybe you kind of have to just memorize it. Although usually, have we talked about the idea that the more oxidized group usually takes priority? Well, which is the more oxidized group here? The OH. Yeah, because it's got the oxygen. So we can follow that rule here. So based on that. So um, three methyl uh, or. 3 methyl 1 phenol or or p methyl phenol does that make sense or meta excuse me m, m right meta remember this m is not the ortho position here this is the ortho so it would be m excuse me M methyl phenol, that would be fine. M methyl phenol or three methyl phenol. We don't need to say one phenol because by definition that's getting the number one. Okay. So you were a little stumped here because you couldn't you didn't know whether to name it a phenol or a toluene. Well phenol takes precedence, maybe because it's more oxidized. There's a common name for this, M cresol, but I haven't seen that very much. So anyway, this is the IUPAC name. Now, how about when there's two alcohols? Well, apparently those are not named phenols anymore. Now we're just going to go back to the IUPAC system. Well, in the IUPAC system, the suffix would just be benzene. And what type of functional group do we have here? Alcohols. What's the suffix for alcohols? Oil. That's right. But what's the suffix for two alcohols? Diol. Good. Good that you remembered that. So this would be a benzene diol. And then we would need some numbers. One and two. Right. So the name for this would be one, two, benzene, diol. So apparently when there's more than one alcohol, we drop the phenol idea and we just go back to benzene. All right. So this would be one, two, benzene, diol. There's a common name for this that I have seen, catechol. I guess that's specifically for one, two, benzene, diol, catechol. I don't know if that really has to be memorized.
So let's use the same principles to name this compound. Could you just do uh, uh, P benzene diol? Yeah, you could call it P benzene diol. In the lecture notes, they use numbers here, though. So what numbers could you use? One for benzene diol. Right. P benzene diol seems logical to me, but in the lecture notes, they just use the number system. So it's the one for benzene diol. Again, we don't use phenol when there's more than one alcohol, apparently. There's a common name for this that might be important, hydroquinone. Later on in the lecture notes, your instructor talked quite a bit about quinones, so this would be hydroquinone. Yeah, right. Only because of that specific location. That's right. So not any old dial, but only the one four. All right, now I think that's enough nomenclature. So another point about phenols. is their acidity. Now, phenols are a type of alcohol, but they are more acidic than a normal alcohol. A phenol is more acidic than normal alcohol. Now, I think this is something that you thought was a, a initial on your last quiz, acid-base properties. OK. This is more acidic than a normal alcohol. Does that mean it's more eager to gain a proton or lose a proton? Lose a proton. Yeah, acids are things that want to lose protons. Well, we need to, first of all, try to explain why this is more eager to lose a proton than normal. So can you think of any reason why it would be easier for this to lose a proton than for a normal alcohol? Uh, well, um, because of the resonance that it's, gonna, it's going to spread out the negative charge through the ring. Good. Let's try drawing that out a little bit more. Let's try drawing what you mean there, but it sounds like you're on the right track. In total, I have four electron pushing arrows. And essentially, I brought the negative charge down onto the ring, and then it pushes the res pushes the pi bonds of. Okay, good. One thing that you remembered is the way to determine whether something is a good acid is to look at what it would look like after it loses the proton. So that's what you did. You drew what the phenol would look like after it loses the proton. Now, if this is a good acid, that must mean that it doesn't mind having this negative charge. That's right. This negative charge is more stabilized than for a normal alcohol. Why is this negative charge more stabilized than on a normal alcohol? Because of the resonance that allows in the ring for the negative charge to be spread throughout the whole. Good. You can see that in a normal alcohol, there's no resonance structures at all. By the way, how many resonance structures are there total for this? Mm -hmm. One thing that would have been a little bit better is, so we can show the negative charge moving here, and that has to kick off these electrons. But we could start by just kicking them off here. Then we would end up with a negative charge on this carbon. I'll put double-headed arrows here to show that this is resonance. And then we can draw another resonance structure by moving the electrons over here. And that gives us another resonance structure with the negative charges over here. And then we can move them again.
where the negative charge is over here. You can't really move it anymore, though, because that would just take you back to where you started. Mm -hmm. If we tried to do these arrows, we would just get the negative charge back onto this oxygen over here. So how many resonance structures did we end up in total? Well, counting the original, original resonance structure, we've got one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. There's one resonance structure where the negative charge is on the oxygen, and then there's three resonance structures where it's on the carbons and the benzene. Now, this turns out to be an important point. Benzene has six carbons, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, in any ion, the negative charge can only be on three of the carbons. Mm -hmm. That turns out to be important for benzene reactivity. Even though benzene has six carbons, generally the resonance structures will only involve three of those carbons. For example, this carbon is going to have negative character. But this carbon is not going to have negative character because there's no resonance structures where this carbon has a negative charge. Mm -hmm. 